Okay, now I've been reviewing IEMs for like a while now, and for like the longest time for competitive games specifically, I've been like recommending the Blonde BL 03s because I think they do a really good job being very engaging and having a pretty good amount of detail on the upper end. But as I've been using more IEMs over time, I think my opinions definitely have changed. Like I lean more towards things like the Moondrop Aria for gaming overall, just because they do so well and are very revealing the sound. It's just, you know, things like this still have like advantages here and there, like it giving you an edge by like um, being engaging and therefore warning you of sounds. And competition grows from basically every sector but it seems blonde has actually given themselves some competition with the blonde bl ones which i've been asked to check out by somebody and i decided why not i guess i'll check them out purchase them myself use my own money and see if it's like uh it's any good you know so uh let's talk about it <laughs> All right, now, of course, we got some disclaimers. Um, I actually purchased this myself because no one was, like, sending me or offering to send me this thing to check it out, so I wanted to check it out really bad because I've heard really good things about it. People have been saying it's comparable to the BL03s, but, you know, we'll be the judge of that. But, you know, that being said, I should also mention that this is going to be more of a gaming focus review versus an audiophile review. I mean, yeah, I do touch on audiophile aspects and talk about the whole spectrum of whatnot and how the sound, soundstage, and everything, but then, you know, I will also be explaining how that relates to its performance in gaming, both competitive gaming and less competitive gaming, to see if it'll um, kick this one's butt, the BL03s, which are better for competitive gaming, but we'll talk about that in a bit. So, with that being said, let's get started. Starting with the box, we got your typical blonde experience. It's even got, like, the weird funky English, which I'm not sure how to feel about. Like, is this supposed to be a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. But regardless, in the box, you're gonna get the IEMs, of course, as well as a little carrying pouch to carry everything. You also get the standard blonde cable, as well as a bunch of different sized ear tips, and a little old manual, in case you don't know how to use earbuds. <laughs> Starting with the cable, it's essentially the same cable you're gonna get with most blonde IEMs. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, because they're still built fairly okay, and they don't tangle easily, and they feel relatively durable for the price. The cable uses an angled 3.5mm jack, which does have blonde's wording, naming, branding on it as well. Further up with the splitter, I do like the steps made to make it a little bit more durable, as the cables after the split do have a little bit of reinforcement, that way when they flex, it's not gonna like tear off from excessive bending and whatnot. The cable does come with an inline mic version, which if you do get, is a really simple microphone with a single button for controls, just you know, like pause, play, and like taking calls or ending calls. Now, for those of you who will be using the microphone, this little inline mic here that comes with this, um, you know, the Blonde BL01, uh, it's, uh, this is how it's going to sound, and it's essentially going to be the same as most Blonde IEMs out there. I believe they use um, the same cable, I think, across most of their products, so, you know, this is going to be a similar experience to most other Blonde IEMs. And just for fun, here's like, you know, to see if you can hear my voice over the typing of my keyboard here. This is using cream switches, which are kind of on the loud, talky side, but, you know, there you go. That's that, that's what the that's the performance of the microphone. Anyway, at the end we have some ear hooks that end in two pin connectors to connect to our IEMs, which, as we can see here, are unusually shaped from most other offerings out there, but look kind of neat nonetheless. The entire body itself is made entirely out of metal, which I do like, as they feel quite robust in the hands. Though this does affect their weight, making them a little bit on the heavy side. That said, up top we got two pin connectors which are protruding, so you can basically use almost any two pin cable with them. And if we took off the ear tip, we also have our nozzle, which is entirely made of metal like the rest of the body. And of course, there is a Grilled to keep your nasties out of here, but even then, I'd still recommend most of you guys out there to clean your ears. You know who you are. And moving on, here's how they look like on my head. The size of them, I thought they were like kind of larger than usual for earbuds, but honestly, due to the round, unusual shape, they kind of fit in quite nicely with my ears. So design-wise, I'd say they look quite fashionable, though I do think there's a little bit more fashion over function due to the fit of them, as the fit was very dependent on which ear tip you use, so I had to like cycle through a bunch of ear tips before I found the right one that gave me the proper fit and seal. And this very much likely has to do with the shape of the earbuds being kind of unusual and not exactly the most ergonomic in the world. And surprisingly, the weight of it wasn't too much of a problem after you found the right fit, but even then it was still kind of finicky to put into the ears and find like the right seal. But it could be just my ear shape and size, and your mileage will vary depending on that as well. All right, now after testing the BL ones for a while and comparing them to the BL 3s it's very clear to me why a lot of people think they sound very similar and how this could kick this one's ass. I mean, for the you know for starters, the BL ones have a lot more metal on them and they feel more robust than the BL 3s And for like half the price almost, or you know like a third of the price, basically a lot less than the BL03, surprisingly. They are a bit heavier because of that. Um, the BL03s are definitely much lighter due to less metal, but, you know, that's with the build and whatnot when it comes to, like, that kind of comparison. When it comes to sound, once again, yeah, they do sound similar, but when you listen closer, there are some stark differences. As some of you guys may know, the blonde BL03s have a V-shaped-ish kind of sound signature. It's a warm sound signature, but they seem to have, like, a slight pushed forward mid-presence-ish, which gave it very engaging mids, and this helped with 
giving like presence to the mids and the highs at the same time. That's why I found them to be very good for competitive gaming. So it's kind of a warm-ish sound signature that was also engaging at the same time. The BL01s on the other hand, they, well, first of all, they actually also have a V-shaped sound signature, but it seems to be more of a traditional V-shaped sound signature that also has recessed mids. And it's pretty clear to me that the mid presence on the BL01s is more recessed than the BL03s. And this could be because of how they um, worked on the highs and the bass on the BL01s. In the bass regions for the BL01, it had a very nice deep reach into the sub bass region and had a good rumble to it, having this dark kind of sound, kind of similar to the BL03s. They're very similar in that bass region. But as we approach the mids, as I've mentioned of before, it is definitely more noticeably recessed on the BL01s. Like it wasn't as forward, wasn't as loud when I played them both at the same volumes. And it would seem that this affected like how intense the, like, the sound overall felt due to like the mid presence being much more noticeably recessed on the BL01. Ones. And this could be due to like the V-shape like affecting the overall sound as the highs are also noticeably a little bit more boosted on the BL01s versus compared to like the BL03s. I honestly think the highs were handled just a little bit better on the BL01s having a little bit more clarity and detail. However, they lacked a little bit of that intensity that would be given by the mid region working together along with it. And you know, this has its ups and downs of what it does. So what happens is the sound, while it can feel more detailed when you're taking a listen to it, it still comes off relaxed compared to the BL03s overall. So then in terms of like musicality, I think the BL01s do a better job than the BL03s, but um, I guess it would also depend on your taste. However, how the sound works in games for the BL01 is definitely going to be different than how it works for the BL03s and what makes them good for what types of games. For example, I've known the BL03s to have a very engaging sound in the mid presence as well as the highs, allowing me to like track people easier and bring my attention to like dangers coming my way in um, a competitive shooting game. Now when it came to the BL01s in competitive shooter situations, it was surprisingly similar to the BL03s. However, I did notice I didn't feel quite as alert on the BL01s when it came to like listening to footsteps and whatnot. They didn't like come to my attention nearly as quickly or as more presently than on the BL03s due to like the mid-range I would think because the mid-range on the BL01s once again are more relaxed than on the BL03s which have a slightly more intense mid-region that helps bring those sounds to my attention because while highs were important and I was able to listen to like footsteps with the highs on the BL01s I still think when it comes to enemies in a certain distance away the mid presence takes over because the sounds we're usually tracking for in competitive shooters is a combination of highs and mids most of the time and depending on their distance it'll use like mids or highs a little bit more and well it also depends on the game of course but I did notice that having less of the mid intensity was not quite as preferable for competitive shooters so when it comes to like more competitive kind of shooter games, I still do think the BL03s have an edge. Now when it comes to non-competitive games, I think the BL01s did a better job, and this has a lot to do with the sound signature and the soundstage and imaging, which I haven't quite talked about yet. When it comes to imaging for both of them, they're still pretty damn good. I think they're both fairly accurate. They're about, you know, equally accurate in terms of like um, the imaging, but I think the highs did help out the imaging just a teeny bit more on the BL01, so it's like maybe like a teeny bit better than the BL03s. Now when it comes to the soundstage, I think the BL01s ones have a slightly larger sound stage than the BL03s. Like both of them of course are small sound stages. They are IEMs. That's kind of normal sound stages always small in these things. But in comparison to each other, the feel of the world feels just more large compared to the BL03s on the BL01s. And this could have to do something with the, the bass and the highs making the world feel like it has a lot of body and the clarity and the detail just gave the imaging and details in the world just a better larger feel on the BL01s. So I did find the BL01s to be a little bit more enjoyable in less competitive, more large open world games compared to the BL03s. But similarly to like my experience with both of them in competitive shooter games, the experience of sound was close, but there was something a little bit different that made one of them better. And you know, in the case of the BL01s, I think it has a lot to do with the soundstage just making the world just feel bigger and more immersive than the BL03s. So what does this essentially mean at the end of the day when it comes to like these two IEMs? Is like the BL03s gonna get dethroned? thrown by the BL01s over here? Uh, not necessarily, but there's a lot of things to take into account. Like, when it comes to competitive shooter games, I still think the BL03s has a slight edge over the BL01s, but when it comes to non-competitive games, I think the BL01s has a slight edge over the BL03s. However, when we talk about price and consider the fact that the BL01s are much cheaper, the BL01s have a strong edge over the BL03s. You can essentially get a sound that's kind of similar to the BL03s for much less with the BL 
001. So that's where the value is at. Like I think for most people, they're willing to sacrifice a little bit of their competitive ability for competitive shooter games if they can save a large amount of money, which you are going to save if you get the BL01s over to BL03s. But some people who are like super hard competitive and have a little bit more money will definitely probably strive for the BL03s over the BL01s. But I think for most people, um, I would lean towards like the BL01s just because you save a lot of money. But if you want to pay a little bit more, have a slightly better edge in competitive shooters, then you know, BL03s still do the job. But once again, it's really up to you and what your priorities are. With that being said, that's pretty much all I have for today. So if this video did help you out with your buying decisions, I'll have links for these both actually in the description in case you do want to buy them at all. And uh, you know, if you, you know, this this um, this channel and you enjoy this channel, you know, you can subscribe for more content, see some more crap and whatnot. Hit the notification bell so you also know when I'm like posting next and whatnot. Um, I also stream on Twitch. I play games every now and then. So I'm trying to be more regular with that. So, you know, link in the description for Twitch if you want to check that out as well. And with that being said, that's pretty much all I have for today. Just gotta know, end of the day, competitive boys, less competitive boys. But either way, they're very similar and they're just, they're, they're, they're like brothers, you know, they're just, they're siblings. But, you know, that's it. That's all I have today. So, um... That's all, that, yep, yeah, that, that's it. I do have another $20 set, in case you made it this far into the video. I know a lot of you guys want me to check out the Moondrop shoes. Well, they're coming out soon, but I do have a lot of other things in my backlog, so we'll see. See you guys next time.